prepare to have your mind blown. Incredible news out of NASA. It's historic. Hubble te Space Telescope has discovered the farthest individual star nicknamed Arendelle. So joining us now to tell us how in the world they found it is astronomer Dr. Dan Coe with the Space Telescope Science Institute. Sir, thank you very much for joining us. We're talking about something that takes us back to almost the beginning of the universe. It's being called the morning star. Can you tell us what it is, how you discovered it? Uh, good morning, Mike. Thanks for having me. And I, I got to say, you know, our minds are blown too. This is uh, so exciting. You know, when you look up at the night star sky, you see stars that are maybe hundreds or thousands of light years away. Um, so at great distances. But this star is 13 billion light years away. Um, and we're looking over 90% of the way back to the Big Bang. We've only ever seen galaxies that far away. So it, millions or billions of stars. So to see an individual star like this is just amazing. There's a very uh, cool sounding effect that made that allowed you to see this individual star. It's called gravitational lensing. Is there a way that you could explain this sort of in layman's terms of what in the world this is and how it sort of focused the light toward the telescope to allow you to see this individual star that far away? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I, uh, it, your uh, the gravitational lensing is uh, very similar to what you can do with, uh, say, the base of a wine glass. I, I brought my uh, prop here, um, and it magnifies these distant objects. And this is one of nature's telescopes. Um, it's when we looked at a massive cluster of galaxies that bend space-time, and the light actually goes around it. And if you get things just right, as we did in this image, you can get this magnified image of this star that's magnified by a factor of thousands that we've never seen before. Wow. Now you've named it or it's been nicknamed Arendelle, which means morning star, correct? That, that's right. My grad student actually discovered it, uh, Brian Welch, and he named it uh, Arendelle. All right. Very cool. Um, how does it compare to our sun? So it's, it's much bigger and brighter. It's probably millions of times brighter than our sun, much more massive. Um, we do know of some other stars that are like that in our own galaxies, um, but this is you know, definitely on the high end, and we're, we're getting ready to, to learn a lot more about it. You know, the, the first stars that, that formed in the universe were probably very different. Now, this is where it gets a little bit difficult for the human brain to comprehend. The star that we're seeing is not there anymore. Right? I mean, this that's, was 13 billion years ago. That's right. So at, as such a, a hot, bright star, it, it burned bright and died young. So it probably only lived for a, a few million years, which, which seems like a long time. But again, we're seeing it as it was 13 billion years ago. And there were probably many of other stars within that galaxy that, you know, lived longer um, over the years. But, um, you know, we're, we're, we're fortunate that we're able to see a, a star like this in the early universe when it was still around. All right, so cool. Well, thank you very much for um, furthering science for us and, and uh, for helping to explain that to us, Dr. Uh, Dan Coe, who was uh, on a team that helped discover a star 13 billion light years away. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Great talking to you.